Hey kids, welcome back to some more science. Science is cool. We're gonna keep talking about simple machines. Last week, you learned about the lever arm and you learned how the lever arm can use us, can be used to do work when we don't have enough muscles. The lever arm helped us lift up heavy things like that couch in my basement. It also helped me pound in some nails and pull them back out again. Well, this week's simple machine is also really cool. It's the wheel and the axle. The wheel and the axle. Two things together that make a simple machine. Now, you know what wheels are. You see them all over the place, on cars, on bikes. We know what a wheel is. We use them to drive around. But that's not all wheels can be used for. The wheel and the axles is a very common machine in our lives. I'm gonna first show you a video about how these two items work together. And then I'm gonna show you some examples of simple machines in your world. And you'll be surprised, you probably see most of these things. When this is all done, you'll get a chance to play with some of these if you're at school. If you're at home, you're just gonna have to look around your house for some simple machines. I'm sure you'll find some. So let's get started learning about the wheel and the axle, another simple machine, which is pretty cool. Suppose you wanted to move something heavy. You could make your work easier if you used wheels on an axle. Wheels and axles make it possible for things to roll. They reduce friction, so you don't have to drag heavy things from place to place. You can push or pull them along. But wheels and axles can do more than cut down friction. You can use them as simple machines. You can attach two wheels to the same axle this way, so that when one wheel turns the axle, the axle turns the other wheel. You just apply a force to the edge of one wheel to make everything turn. Each time the first wheel turns around once, so does the axle and so does the other wheel. The second wheel turns with the same amount of force that you apply to the first wheel. So this machine transfers a force from one place to another. But if the two wheels are different sizes, much more happens. Here's a machine with two different sized wheels on the same axle, or with two things that act like wheels. This is one wheel, of course. The second wheel is here, the circle made by the pedals as they go around. The circle acts like a wheel. You apply a force to the pedals. Through these arms, the pedals make the axle turn, and the axle makes the large wheel turn. When one wheel makes one complete revolution, so does the other wheel. This is the distance your foot moves in one revolution, the circumference of the small wheel. But this, the circumference of the large wheel, is the distance you roll forward in one revolution, much farther than your foot moves. If the circumference of this wheel is twice the circumference of this wheel, you roll forward twice as far as you move the pedal. So this machine multiplies your distance by two. If you wanted to roll forward more distance each time the pedals go around, you could do it by making the large wheel larger. Now the circumference of this wheel is three times the circumference of this wheel. And with each revolution, you roll forward three times the distance your feet move. What if the smaller wheel on a wheel and axle machine were even smaller, the size of the axle, so that the axle itself is really acting as the second wheel? Then a point on it would move only this distance, but with very great force. Axles acting as wheels are often used to wind up ropes or cables in order to pull things or lift things. <laughs> With some machines, you turn an axle by turning a rather small wheel. When you need to apply more force to an axle, however, the wheel you turn is usually larger. 
So with this machine, you get a lot of force because you turn a great distance. Hey, kids. So now that you've seen what a wheel and axle are, let's take a look at some examples of wheels and axles that you might see in your life. To start off with, here's a little wheel and an axle that I built. It's a big wheel with a little axle. Just like in the movie, when I turn the big wheel, the axle turns. If I turn the axle, the wheel turns. And I can even add a handle to make my life easier. We have a lot of handles in our lives. If I add a handle, even though the handle is just one little screw, it turns the big wheel too. So the handle can act like the big wheel to turn the axle. So let's take a look at ways that you see wheels and axles in your life. I've broken a pencil, so I'm using a knife to sharpen it. This sure is a lot of work. I wish I had a simple machine that could help me do this rather than cutting with this knife. Not to mention it's kind of sharp. I could hurt myself. I know. How about the pencil sharpener? Yes, this is an amazing simple machine. Wheel and axle. Here is the wheel. The big wheel is the handle. But when I turn the big wheel, it turns the middle part, the axle. And on top of that, it turns this spinning blade too as part of the contraption. Let's see how that works. Safety first. Make sure it's locked down. There we go. Ooh. Oh, wow. That's going to be... Oh, wow! Look at that. Gave me a very, very sharp tip. Can you see that? Um, the only problem is it's kind of making a mess here. Ah, that's what the cover's for. This is an amazing invention. If I put the cover on, then all of those little pieces of my pencil will get stuck inside the cover. It's kind of hard to get this thing stuck down sometimes, especially if there's junk under it. There we go. Now, when I sharpen my pencil, All of the pieces, oh, that does a really good job. All of the pieces are caught in this little cup and I can just dump them out when it gets full. What a really cool, simple machine that uses the wheel and the axle. Awesome. This is a really simple use of the wheel and the axle. A screwdriver, right? Look, here's the big wheel, the handle, and there's the little wheel. So I actually, have a broken screwdriver, the handle broke off. And when I try to use it to screw things in, ow, I can do it, but it really hurts my fingers a lot. Oh, now it's stuck. Ugh, ugh, that's really hard. I need to be able to grab it more. I need a big wheel on it so that I can use more muscles. That's what this does. The axle's still pretty small because otherwise this thing could get heavy, but safety first. With this big handle, I can get a really good grip and screw in the screw with no problem. I can also unscrew the screw, no problem. The wheel and the axle. Now also along with this, I have a really cool tool, the drill. If I need to make some new holes for my screws, I can use this little hand drill. I have an electric one, but this one shows you better what the wheel and the axle is. Here's the handle. You can see some gears on the back side there. When I turn the big handle, it turns this big red wheel, which turns this gear, which turns this little gear, which turns my axle in the middle, which in this case is actually attached. There's a little blade screwed on. I can use this, oops, assuming it's tight enough, it's so hard to get this thing tight enough. Ugh. I can use this to drill a new hole. Cool. All right, that did a good job. Let's take a look what we got. There, 
I made a new hole right there. I could use that to put in another screw or maybe a little nail using this absolutely phenomenal wheel and axle system. Kids, I have another fun example of the wheel and the axle. It's the well. What a well is, is a way to get water out of the ground. If you live in a community that doesn't have water towers or underground plumbing, you have to get water out of the ground. And this is the way they did it a long time ago too. Some communities out in the farmlands, they still use wells. Their wells are automatic. This is a hand crank well. It uses the wheel and the axle. See, I've made it out of Legos. Here it is. You can see the middle has an axle and the outside has a handle. And this helps me in two ways. One, buckets of water are super heavy. I can't lift a bucket of water. Second, the water is usually way down in the ground, which means I need a long rope, which means I have to pull all this rope and a heavy bucket up. Where does the rope go? What a mess. It's gonna be all over the place and probably getting a big knot. So by having this set up, the wheel and the axle to help me, I can avoid both of those problems and it works like this. I have an axle in the middle and then the handle acts like the wheel. Here's the big wheel, which is gonna give me more muscles. And there's the axle, which is actually winding up the rope when I'm not using it. To get the water, I unwind it and it goes down into the well. Once I've scooped up some water, I bring it back up. And I have some delicious, well fresh water. Cool, huh? The wheel and the axle. Ugh. This recipe says I have to whisk this for 12 minutes. My arms are getting tired. I wish there was a way to make this simpler. I wish somebody would invent a machine, a simple machine that could help me do this. Oh wait, there is one. My hand beater. Oh yeah, this machine uses the wheel and the axle to help me out. Now I could use an electric mixer, but before electric mixers got invented, there was this. And sometimes, honestly, it's just easier to use this machine. Take a look got a handle on the top and then it has a handle here. That's going to be one wheel and that wheel turns the axle in the middle which turns this great big wheel that's got some teeth on it, some gears. Those gear teeth have touched these white gears inside which turn both of these beaters. Check it out. When I turn the handle it turns two beaters. That's twice as many as my little hand thing. Oh yeah, look at this go. And I'm not even working very hard. This is a great, simple machine. <laughs> I love bubbles, don't you? another example of a wheel and axle. This is one I made, so it doesn't work great, but you can kind of get the idea. Just like my big wheel here with the handle on it and then the little axle, I've got a fishing pole. And you can see that the string is wound around the central part and that I've got a handle that helps me wind the string up or let the string out. The string is out and when I turn the handle, it turns the big wheel, which turns the little wheel where the string is connected, and you can see it winds up my string. That's how a fishing pole works. Yet another example in your life of the wheel and the axle. Here's yet another example of a wheel and an axle. Doorknobs. If you've never taken apart a doorknob, this is what they look like if you do. You've got the big wheel is actually the handle part, which I turn. And in this case, when I turn this one, it turns this square piece on the inside. So this axle is a little bit is square. And that piece is attached to something inside your door that pulls the latch back. Now, some doorknobs 
are round like this one, and some doorknobs are handles. But remember, handles and long things act like wheels as well. So both of those kinds of doorknobs are, the, are examples of the wheel and the axle. Cool! For my next example of the wheel and the axle, I have an electric motor. An electric motor is a wheel and an axle. I have a cord plugged into the wall, and the cord is going to power inside. Now, I can't open up inside, but I'll tell you right now, there's something spinning inside. There's a wheel spinning inside run by electricity. When I turn on the electricity, that motor is going to turn this little shaft right there, the axle. And we can attach all sorts of things to the axle that can spin, that will do work for us. One thing we can attach, based on this, you can probably guess what this is used for, what I took apart, is a fan blade. Here's a fan blade that I can screw on the top, pop that on there, screw it down to connect it using yet another wheel and axle, the screwdriver, safety first. And now when I turn it on, that motor turns the axle, which turns yet another wheel, a wheel that isn't really a wheel. It's a wheel shaped like a fan, but it's still a wheel. And so it makes lots of good air conditioning. Ah, uh, and I can use this to cool myself down on a hot day. Way to go, wheel and axle. So that's all I have on the wheel and the axle this week. A super cool, simple machine. I do want to finish this video by saying that you should not go home and start taking things apart. A lot of stuff has got electricity. If you're plugged into the wall and it can zap you or certain things your family may not be so excited about you taking apart. But if you have someone in your family that likes to help, ask if you can take some stuff apart. Find an old broken fan or maybe a screwdriver and some screws and see if you can mess around with some simple machines. If you're at school, your teacher will have some stations for you to practice some of the things that we've seen so that you can play around with some wheel and axle simple machines. Have some fun with it. And remember, science is cool.